If I had to pick just one warm season cover crop, buckwheat would be my pick. Of all the options for the home garden, I feel like buckwheat offers the most advantages and is the easiest to use. The biggest reason that I love this cover crop is how quickly it grows and smothers out weeds. At optimal temperatures, which are right around 70 degrees, buckwheat will germinate as quickly as three to four days and it reaches flowering in as little as three to four weeks, completing its entire life cycle in 10 to 12 weeks. And because of this rapid growth, it can outcompete pretty much all the other weeds in your garden. Now, not only does it offer quick growth right out of the gate, but it will also give me quick regrowth. So if buckwheat is mowed down before it reaches about 25% bloom, it will actually grow back and often grow back even bigger and bushier than prior to cutting. The other thing is if you let it flower and go to seed, it will sprout up very, very easily on its own. So you can get two consecutive cover crops with only doing the planting work one time. Now, another reason I love buckwheat is because it's very tolerant of poor soils and it can help improve the texture of heavy soil. So buckwheat has a lot of fine little roots that work their way into the topsoil, effectively breaking it up and making it more friable. So buckwheat will do well even on soils that are low fertility. It will also grow in soils where there is a high content of actively decomposing organic matter. Buckwheat also acts as a phosphorus scavenger, meaning that it can uptake phosphorus and then after it is cut and begins to decompose into the ground, it will release the phosphorus, making it more readily available to whatever your subsequent vegetable crops are. And a final advantage, and maybe one of my most favorite things about buckwheat, is how it draws in the beneficial insects and the pollinators. Of all the things that I plant in my garden, I probably see more insect activity on my buckwheat blooms than anything else. And a final non-cover crop related benefit, chickens love buckwheat, both the foliage and the seeds. So if you're raising chickens and you just wanna plant a, a plot of buckwheat and let your chickens loose in it, or cut some off and throw it to them, they love it and it provides a lot of good nutrition for them as well. Buckwheat is frost tender, so you wanna plant it anytime after your danger of frost has passed in the spring or about four to six weeks before your first estimated fall frost date in the fall. I typically just broadcast sow my buckwheat seed. It can also be drilled in at about a half an inch depth, but for me in a small space in the garden, it's easy just to broadcast sow it and then tamp it in either with my feet or with the head of a rake or something like that. And on a smaller scale planting, the recommended rate is about one pound of buckwheat seed per 500 square feet of garden. Now buckwheat needs very, very minimal care. I try to always plant it before rain is forecasted. That way I don't have to do any watering. If I do anything at all, it's just a little watering in the beginning to get the seed going and established. After that, it gets nothing. I don't water it, I don't fertilize it, I just let it do its thing. Now because buckwheat is so quick to mature and go to seed, the general recommendation is to terminate the cover crop seven to 10 days after flowering begins. This is gonna give you optimal biomass, optimal nutrition release in the soil, as well as preventing the seed from dropping and then coming up in places in the garden where you don't want it to come up. That being said, I often wait too long to cut mine down and it does go to seed. I've never had an issue with it. Even if it comes up in my vegetable beds, it's very, very easy to pull. And sometimes, as I mentioned before, I get twice the cover crop coverage in a row without doing the work of reseeding. Buckwheat is very, very easy to terminate. If you time it out to where it's maturing at the time of your first frost, you can just let it frost kill. Otherwise, if you want to terminate it in the middle of the season when it's still warm, you can easily mow it. You can cut it with a weed whacker. And a tiny plot, you can cut it with the scissors or you can just till it into the ground. And once you've cut all that foliage down, you have two options. You can either leave it lay on top of the soil as a mulch, and using this method, it's going to be slower to break down and it's gonna to continue to suppress weeds from popping up. The other option is to work it into the soil right away. 
And this option is going to allow the residue to release nutrients and more quickly break down in the soil. Now, as I mentioned before, buckwheat is one of my absolute favorites. And it's mainly because of that quickness in the versatility. So anytime there is a hole in the garden, I will come in and sow it with buckwheat seed just to get some soil coverage so weeds aren't sprouting up. And it is so easy to use on any scale. I've used it in as small a place as my raised beds before, all the way up to multi-acre plantings. And I'd love to hear from you. If you use buckwheat in your garden, what is the main reason that you like it as a cover crop? And if you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel, Grow Fully with Jenna, for more videos on using different types of cover crops in the home garden. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.